Welcome back. I've got quite a few questions from me posting about this, uh, putting the wastegate right on the turbine housing and kind of how to do it and what I used and things like that. So I'm just going to go over everything I used and hopefully uh, this will help someone out there. I just want to preface this video by saying there are many different people that weld better than I. Uh, this was just all information given to me by a good friend, Bradley at Savage Fabrication. He does this every day for a living and he gave me instructions. I followed it and it worked. So I'm sure your buddy or your uncle or whoever you know that's a professional welder has a way to do it too. And if they have a, a way that, that works, you can use that as well. This is just mine. So to get that out of the way, uh, if you have a cool suggestion of a way you do it or a, a metal that you use, uh, let me know. But this is just to help out anyone who's interested. Let's jump into it. So the very first thing is I am using a really basic TIG welder. This is an Everlast Power TIG 185 dual voltage. It is currently on 110. I don't have my 220 set up here yet in the shop, um, but I had it all the way maxed at 125 amps. So when I did this, I probably didn't need all of that 125, but I maxed it out and it worked really well. Uh, the next thing that people are gonna wanna know is what the setup I have is, and this is absolutely, you don't, need this. If you had something a lot more basic, you could do it, but I have the Furic Fupa 12. So this is the, the number 12 cup. Uh, you could use like a 10 or an eight or, you know, kind of whatever you have. If you don't have a fancy gas lens, that's fine too. Uh, you can use whatever you have. If you just have a standard lens, um, it's totally doable. It's not like you, you need this to be successful. It'll just, uh, the results will just be, uh, slightly, slightly different when you're welding. Um, and I used ER 316L filler. So 16th ER 316L, that is a stainless filler rod. And that's what I used here. And you can see on here. So going from stainless, and then this is mild schedule 40 steel, inch and a half. I actually just got this pipe from like a plumbing supply. It's just plain old steel, uh, schedule 40 and then this is uh, a form of cast iron this is a whole set he 341 and uh, let me kind of explain how i was taught to do this and then uh, you can give it a try yourself so when i first spoke with bradley he said you want to do tacks um, either side first so you do a tack on the opposite side kind of in the middle of the pipe and when you do tacks to cast iron it's not you're not going to do a small tack you're going to do like a half inch tack it's going to actually be really wide i'll show some pictures as the video goes on um, and you can kind of see that the other thing you need to know is you need to put a lot of filler um, of the filler toward the cast iron and when you're when you have the torch on there you need to back off the heat very slowly. Like just let it sit at like its lowest amp that it'll hold an arc just for a few seconds after and let it really slow down. The The uh, stainless filler likes to have a lot of taper. Otherwise it can crack and you'll see these cracks manifest. It's not on here, but you'll see cracks. I'll put a picture. Where the tacks will crack and they might crack horizontally and they might, you know, they might even crack vertically and that's totally fine. You're going to go back over those because you're going to do multiple passes. But if you do a nice wide, like half inch wide, almost like a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, a stitch. Yeah. If you like stitch it, you know, half inch, half inch, half inch, um, all the way around, it'll hold up better. And that's what I ended up doing. I did two small attacks at first and they cracked and then, um, the yeah the way i was told to to fix it was by going wider and uh, getting the filler in there heavier so um yeah tack both sides then tack the top and the bottom then do tacks uh like you know on a like it's you get six um and then you know you could do as many tacks as you need but i would say like at least six so top bottom sides 
and then between those like in an X pattern. Um, and then you're gonna do the bottom first. So you'll do this first half. You'll do from this side over to this side and that's gonna pull up on it. And then you'll do this side. Um, you'll do the other half. So this half right here and that'll pull it back down. Um, I did, the first pass was really wide. It was about as wide as both of these um, two passes together. And then to cover it, I, instead of doing one more big pass, which you could do, uh, it was suggested to me by Bradley to uh, do two passes. And that is partially as well for aesthetic. So you can do like, just make a smaller pass that's more linear. Um, this one actually by the end turned out to be kind of my best one this bottom right here. Um, I wish I could have uh, got dialed in like that for both of them all the way around. But yeah, um, just lay it in there. Make sure you get uh, the puddle going on on the pipe and then pull it towards the, the cast and uh, keep the heat in the cast. Push the filler into the cast as soon as it will take filler and just get it mixed in there. And it's really normal to get cracking, especially on the, the tacks and the first pass, that's okay. Uh, go back over them, widen those tacks up, put more filler in it, and then at the end, uh, do two to three passes on the outside. Um, also, I kept the wastegate clamped the entire time I was doing this. I do not want this flange to warp. These flanges can warp right here where they seam against the wastegate. And if it leaks there, you'll be pissed because then you have to cut this off. And unless you like have a way to mill that with all this together, you're not gonna be uh, very happy. So when you, I'll show a picture of it too, but when you when you weld this, the flange to the, the pipe, or sorry, the, the, the pipe to the wastegate flange, you're going to want to keep this clamped. and just do it in small patterns, uh, small passes, and do like six tacks at least, uh, kind of like in a hex pattern. Um, in fact, you can do, you can see on mine, you do tacks kind of as often as you wanna stop, and that's about as wide as my, my uh, FUPA cup. So like maybe like three quarters of an inch to an inch um, between tacks, and then that's where I would do a strip and then go opposite side, do a strip, and then go opposite side, do a strip between the tacks. Um, hopefully I'm explaining this well enough for you guys, but basically, yeah, you're just weld these together, keep this clamped to it, then it will keep the flange here from warping if it has something else that it's clamped to that can take the heat and then hold the dimensions. And then when you weld this, keep this all clamped together and, uh, yeah, you don't need to do all of it in one shot. You can do, you know, strips of one inch or uh, 1.5 to one times the uh, width of your cup, uh, your gas cup. Um, the other thing is people always ask, uh, can you put this, uh, you know, can you put the wastegate like directly on the side? Like if you had the pipe right here, uh, you absolutely can do that. Uh, but it won't work optimally. So you want the wastegate in line with the gas flow. That way the gas is going this way. As soon as the wastegate opens, the gas just goes straight up in. It's the most efficient. And that way you you can actually evacuate more wastegate. You can use do you can get more out of your wastegate. So you have a smaller wastegate like this, like a 38 millimeter, which is an inch and a half. Um, if the flow path is correct, you actually get more flow per size of your wastegate. So you can make a smaller wastegate do better. Whereas maybe to get the same amount of flow, you would have to go to like an inch and three quarter, or a 50 millimeter or something like a two inch uh, wastegate. Um, I have put one on the side like this before and it works. Uh, but if, if it's not set up right and the gas speed is right, it'll actually act like a Venturi. The gas will go around and right where that hole is on the side, it can actually pull a vacuum. It can pull a depression. It kind of acts like a Venturi. So if, if, if it's in line, if the gases are in line with the wastegate, they'll want to just flow out naturally. Um, so 
trying to think if there's anything else um, that I'm missing, but that's how you do it. It's actually uh, somewhat time consuming compared to just putting the wastegate on a manifold provision or if you have one uh, somewhere else. At least for me, I'm I'm not I don't weld all the time. You know, if I did this every day, I'm probably sh I'm sure I could knock it out. But getting this cope perfectly with the uh, the housing is sometimes a little bit tricky. So anyway, that's uh, my Ramblatron, and uh, just here to tell you that if you're a novice and you got like a basic 110 TIG welder, you can actually do this in your garage and uh, and have fun with it. So uh, if that doesn't make sense to you listen to it from someone else that uh that knows and and has done a lot of these before and i'm sure they'll have a method for you that'll work just fine but it's not scary you can totally do it and uh these are proven to hold and uh, have really good wastegate priority anytime i pull the data log from someone who has the wastegate on the turbine housing the boost comes right up to peak where it's going to be and it just just flat and it's within like two tenths all the way to red line so this is actually very very efficient um Anyway, I uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys. If you like this content um, and you want to learn more, uh, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Thank you.